Hi, everybody. All right, we've got a weird topic to discuss today. The topic at hand, obviously, Jared Leto, as a former emo, you know, I know he's an actor or whatever now, but this is still the front man to 30 Seconds to Mars. That's who he is for me. And I've got some stories about that too, because I have some friends who live in a small town, or they should say they used to live in a small town, and he, I guess, went there for a concert with the band and had a really nasty experience with him. So before any of this cult drama shenanigans ever happened, I already had a pretty negative impression of him. Like when I saw him start to become an actor and stuff, I was like, ew, you're just like really gross. So seeing this happen and now seeing he's got a cult, I'm like, wow, this is literally the least surprising thing on planet Earth. He's also an Academy Award winning actor. And he's also known for his supposed cult films like Fight Club, American Psycho and Requiem for a Dream. Uh, he's also known for his bigger roles in movie franchises where he played the Joker in Suicide Squad and Justice League and Morbius in Morbius, as many of you are pointing out in the chat. Also, of course, the lead singer and co-founder of 30 Seconds to Mars. This dude is infamous for his extreme method acting, something people have actually recently started to call out, not just him, but other people that do this whole method acting thing. He's been starting to be called out for that and for just weird, bizarre behavior on sets and in public. He's also been accused of sexual misconduct by several women since the early 2000s, if you didn't know this. And he's also been known, apparently, to inappropriately pursue underage girls. Now, that is a far cry from all the jokes we're gonna be discussing today, because these are some pretty heavy, pretty serious topics. Let's get into some of the timeline, though, of, of Jared Leto, of our, our main topic of today, shall we? So we're gonna go ahead and skip from, from birth apparently in 1971. And we're gonna go straight to the year 1994. So let's talk about this article. Jared Leto at 21 taught 14 year old Claire Danes how to make out during my so-called life. He seemed ancient, she said. And uh, she would be right because a 21 year old kissing a 14 year old, strange as heck. It's illegal apparently, unless it's Hollywood, because then the rules are different. Um, yeah, when I was 14 years old, I remember being with my friends, unlike Omegle. And and I and I remember that there was this one dude that I think me and this girl that I was friends with, like my freshman year of high school, maybe, that we met him on Omegle and we ended up giving him our our AIM or our AIM. Uh, and he had our like MySpace stuff. And at the time, of course, we were like 14 years old. And this dude was probably 22 or 23 years old. And I remember when we were young, we thought it was cool. You know, we're like, oh, we've got like this older dude that's like into us. Interestingly enough, like when I turned 22, 23, I actually thought of that moment again for the first time since really that whole thing had happened. And I, I, and I remember just looking at them and I go, these are babies. It hit me for the first time in my life that I was like, oh my God, that was inappropriate. Like that was grooming. I was like, fuck. I only say that to preface this, that hopefully that's not the headspace Claire Danes was in. I was a very insecure person in high school and it took me many years to kind of unpack a lot of those feelings. The validation from an older man when you are underage is a terrifying feeling that it was something that hit me like a brick truck as an adult that I go, they didn't like me because I was mature for my age or any of that crap. It was because I didn't know any better and I wouldn't be able to identify red flags. I hope Claire had a good support group around her. I don't understand why this is a thing that was okay for this 21 year old Jared Leto to make out with a 14 year old. It's kind of weird, you know, for Hollywood to one, cast a 14 year old and two, then cast a 21 year old to be the romantic interest. Hollywood likes to use the whole, but it, they're pretending, but they're pretending. Still a 14 year old and a 21 year old. So I'm like, you're gonna have to fucking excuse me if I think that this is pretty horrific. So this is his first kind of breakout thing. I didn't even know this is what he did prior to 30 Seconds to Mars. That's where we start. Um, then we get to what is considered his breakout role. Um, I guess it's a movie called Prefontaine, which is like the first time, I guess, in a movie that he did something that was actually notable, I guess, in terms of the film industry of whatever notable is. He received reports on his commitment and work ethic and, not and it was notable for how he resembled the real life subject 
uh, which was Steve Prefontaine. Um, so then we move on one more year, red thin line that he was in. Look at that little baby face. So this is 25 year old as we're kind of closing up the late nineties. Uh, apparently also in 1998 is where he starts the band 30 Seconds to Mars. I legitimately thought 30 Seconds to Mars or something was formed in like 2002 or 2003 and they just happened to make the right moves. I didn't know he was already a working Hollywood dude. Early 1999 through the early 2000s, apparently he gets solidified as a notable and legitimate cult film actor. He is in Fight Club, American Psycho and Requiem for a Dream. Didn't know that. Uh, I didn't know he was in all of these movies, to be honest. Um, again, I thought he was just the lead singer. So now it turns out, you know, in reality, we have this actor who starts a band as a side gig and then the band takes off as part of the emo era. And then maybe that actually gives some credence as to why his music videos were so narrative and unlike a music video, they were more like movies. Now this kind of makes sense is because he was an actor. He also apparently, during this time, which, you know, Pop Sugar added again with the with the hot tea. I'm still not going to keep in touch though, babes. Proof that Jared Leto has had as many girlfriends as he had hairstyles. Um, he apparently just dated everybody. Salil Moon Fry, I, I don't know who's, oh, Punky Brewster. Okay, never mind. They were apparently dating uh, Cameron Diaz, obviously super popular, Scarlett Johansson. He dated Ashley Olsen, very interesting. And that's Lindsay Lohan, sorry, Lowen. I didn't know that. We've all been pronouncing her name wrong, by the way. It's Lowen, Lindsay Lowen. So Jared Leto and Lindsay Lowen were apparently working together for, they say, which the actor famously put on 50 pounds to play John Lennon's killer, Mark David Chapman. The movie came out in 2007. Didn't know that was even a movie, but apparently he was connected. Well, they say connected. Uh, to Paris Hilton, which I just hope to God she would have had better standards than this, but okay. Lydia Hurst, oh, we're in 2008. Isabel Lucas, 2009, we're still before 2010. I'm gonna stop when we hit the 2010s, but I didn't realize there was that many C. <laughs> I'm gonna try and keep it scooting. We're gonna pause on his dating life there, but apparently, yeah, he just dated a bunch of people. We move on. Uh, in 2013, this is a video, which I don't know if I'm allowed to get away with. Uh, he wins best supporting actor. So he wins this Academy Award for his portrayal of a drug addicted transgender woman named Rayon. I didn't even know he did that. Why didn't they just hire an actual trans woman? Uh, apparently after 2013, right? He gets this award in 2014. Apparently he's he's just vibing, I guess, for like three years or whatever, just doing his thing. And, and then around 2016 is where this infamous monstrosity, <sighs> comes into play, this, this occurs. He becomes the Joker. I don't know, it just, there's so many better Jokers out there and this was it. Zack Snyder's small screen Justice League reboot will mark a return for an unloved figure. Could Leto have the last laugh? That's kind of funny the way it's written because uh, no, he did not have the last laugh. I don't know how he got the Morbius movie if we're gonna be totally honest. It's, it seems so wrong. So some of the article is kind of talking about that there's, some iffy, you know, people that aren't feeling great. He already sucked the first time being the Joker. Let's get into, I'm gonna click on a link in here because this is the piping hot tea of what people want to know because this is one of the first times Leto was getting noticed again in Hollywood, so to speak, and it was not for good reasons. So it's every crazy thing the Suicide cast has said about Jared Leto's Joker. So apparently Will Smith, never met Jared Leto on set, that's the whole thing. Back in October, Smith dropped by the Beats One radio show to discuss the new album. And when he started talking about the Suicide Squad, he revealed he never actually met Jared Leto because method actor Jared Leto was that committed to being the Joker. We worked together for six months and we've never exchanged a word outside of action and cut. We've never had said hello or good day. I've only spoken to him as Deadshot and him as the Joker. I literally have not met him yet. Not a single word exchanged off camera. He was all in on the Joker. I think that's weird. Take my word as a grain of salt as some non-educated triangle living my best life as much as I can. If you have to method act, I don't think you're actually that good of an actor. Method acted to, to me, and in my opinion, comes off as something that is more of a publicity stunt over something that's actually beneficial to acting. Feel free to correct me, but I just don't see the value in it 
while it may be good for you to stay in character and absorb the character for months on end or whatever, if what you do has a negative effect and hurts so many other people in the process, I don't think that's a net good. I think part of something being overall good is that it has to be good for everybody, not just you, especially in like a movie set where this is not like a solo thing. There's lots of people involved. I've definitely seen similar opinions to mine get, you know, absolutely fucking roasted and toasted online. So I understand there are people who disagree with me and that's okay. I'm perfectly okay with that. But let's move on to the next one. Uh, Margot Robbie received a live rat from Jared Leto. Again, method acting issues. And right underneath the comment says, Jared Leto sent everyone a dead hog as the Joker, of course. In the real world, right? Non-Hollywood world. Think about, you know, your groups of friends or coworkers. And actually coworkers may be a really good example. If you are working at a place and your coworker sends everybody a dead hog, are you gonna think that that person's okay? Because personally, I'm gonna be really fucking terrified. Um, and then this was something that was brought up, I saw in an earlier comment, uh, anal beads, which I didn't think would be part of the discussion, but here we are. In an interview with E! News, parentheses, method actor Jared Leto revealed that he sent everyone in the cast used condoms and anal beads as a means to further identify with the Joker. I hope the anal beads were also not used, but it doesn't specify. I mean, it says used condoms and anal beads, but it I don't know if they're referring to used condoms and used anal beads. But of course there's more because there's crude rap presence. Remember when Jared Leto gave everyone a box full of nudie mags, a dildo, a switchblade, and a used condom as a rap present. And a wrap present, my understanding is when the movie ends, when you, you wrap up filming and you're done, people will exchange gifts. Um, and that's apparently the gift he gave. So fucking thoughtful. Hey, Leto, Jared shows he's a teen play. So this is written in 2005. The 33 year old Requiem for a Dream actor last seen squiring Ashley Olsen and Lindsay Lohan around town, has been aggressively pursuing many of the teen models shacked up at the Maritime Hotel. Is that not a creepy opening line? Leto, who booked a suite at the Meatpacking District hotspot while he was in town with his rock band, 30 Seconds to Mars, has become infamous for calling and texting some of his underage objects of desire several times a day, according to one in the know snitch. I mentioned earlier, I had a story about why I do not like Jared Leto. And it doesn't stem from any of these news posts or gatherings or general stuff about him. It is literally based on an interaction that my friends, when we were late high school, early college with 30 Seconds to Mars, the band, I didn't go and I'm really grateful I didn't go for the record. Back around the time, let's see, I think I graduated, but we still had some friends that were in like their last year of high school, right? Like they were now seniors and we were now freshmen. So we're talking about a one to two year age gap of friends. I had moved to California and these friends were in Colorado and 30 Seconds to Mars came by and they had a concert in town. They go to this concert. Uh, I remember them saying that he was really weird that night. He seemed either drunk. Um, they just said something about him wasn't adding up. They had paid for VIP tickets or whatever. So afterwards it involved a meet and greet. And at the time, one of my friends who is now ace, which would explain the experience, didn't ever like people touching them. And I think that that's, I think that's very fair. A lot of people don't like it. My sister's one of those people. And I understand that, that's that's cool. I respect it. But this guy, however, doesn't. He was a dick and very handsy. And again, I'm saying this because these friends were in high school. I remember them calling me the day after and they told me they were so upset with the concert and so devastated by it that collectively, they didn't really feel comfortable listening to the music anymore. But now when I'm seeing all of this collectively come up, it makes that story just a bit weirder. He's been approaching all the girls and inviting them to his shows. Oh, Jesus Christ, is this about to be what I just talked about? Girls from IMG, Elite, Next, and women are staying there and Jared has been hitting on all of them. He's a serial texter. He is constantly texting these 16 and 17 year old girls. It's really creepy. Hmm. He tried collecting a 17 year old new models number 
and she declined because she already had a boyfriend and the fact that a frowning chaperone was standing right behind her probably didn't help Leto's case. Like, what the fuck? That's really gross. Let's take a look at this one. Elijah Wood recalls a scuffle with Jared Leto is ridiculous. The actor says he was shell-shocked by a confrontation over Leto's band. So Elijah Wood says he's still scratching his head over an incident in which an angry Jared Leto grabbed him at an MTV U Woody Awards in New York. Wood tells Jane Magazine in its February issue that the confrontation, which happened in October, was sparked by comments he had made over Leto's rock band, 30 Seconds to Mars. And Wood said he was basically upset at the fact that I didn't like his band. He said that initially and then walked away. So I don't know, like this whole method acting and being an asshole and need for control and talking to underage girls and someone doesn't like his band and it's cause for a fucking fight, apparently. It's a little weird. All of it adds up that the dude's just a little creepy. Then there's also this a celebrity gossip blog, Celeb Bitchy, that claims that Jared Leto grabbed a stripper's neck. Oh, excuse me. I don't want to hear stories about the Jubilee. Uh, that grabbed Jared Leto's neck while she gave his brother a lap dance. That's also weird. Another Cosby, a reminder that several women have accused Jared Leto of sexual assault. This is in 2015, by the way. The folks in a Suicide Squad, the higher ups, most certainly probably knew this and still cast him in it anyway. Remember how squeaky we felt when Jared Leto failed to handle criticism for his stereotypical portrayal of a trans woman in the Dallas Buyers Club. Now with his upcoming role as the Joker in Suicide Squad, perhaps we should be worrying that his portrayal will be a little too believable. So when you begin to read stories of encounters with Leto from groupies of his band, 30 Seconds to Mars, an alarming pattern emerges. Were my friends just part of a fucking statistic? Was this that common that their story isn't unique? Hold on. Um. I'm having a learning moment right now. It seems about half the stories state or imply that some aspect of the sexual encounter was non-consensual on the women's or girls, several stories of him having sex and flirting with girls as young as 15 part. Well, considering for work, he legitimately was making out and playing the love interest for a 14 year old. Oh God, that made me so sick to say sorry. Of a fucking 14 year old. I don't know. It seemed like it was a pattern waiting to happen. Just to clarify, this is all based on victims' words. He's never been taken to court over any of this. Uh, but there are a lot of women saying similar things and it adds up to a very disturbing picture. So the most quoted groupie story is found in a now infamous Tumblr post. It is explicit, um, but the gist is this. I felt as though I was being raped and not even a play rape. In his mind, it seemed like he thought he was fucking raping me. It was very odd. The victim explained that he would not stop when she said he was hurting her and that at one point she even attempted to stop him by biting him. Here are some more alarming receipts. Another one says I had sex with him when I was 15. I lost all respect for Jared Leto after I met too many teenage girls who have been approached by Jared in order to sleep with them. He's just another rock star who let his ego get to his head so he can take advantage of young girls. He even hit on my 15 year old best friend. He's no better than Roman Polanski in my eyes. This shit uh, it has been around. Stories of his flirting with the inappropriately aged and choking non-consenting women abound. Why do we continue to give this man our attention and our praise when not only is he creepy, but there are many women for whom the sight of his face is a trigger for their worst memories? It's a good question. This is the YouTube video, The Echelon, 30 Seconds to Mars. It was on their channel, it was just over a minute long. And this was essentially what started the whole thing. It was a promo video and it was referring to the fan base as The Echelon. And what people noticed about this was that it used a lot of cult-like imagery and terminology, and it was interspersed with fairly typical band promo footage. So it was a little weird, you know, oh, emotions, music, like love, communication. Like it's very, you know, oh, there's some dreams. There's, there's lots of Jared and triangles, unfortunately. I am not part of the echelon, um, but this is kind of, you know, in saying family, like the key word of toxicity is we're like a family here. So we have his cult 
and articles like this start popping up. And it started off with this article that kind of is framing the whole thing as a joke. It's a joke, you know, you have such a cult following. It's a joke, it's a joke, but it was not fully a joke. You know what I mean? So of course there's this weird tweet. Yes, there we go. So here he goes, yes, this is a cult, 2019. I mean, yeah, you tell me what this looks like. Pretty fucking culty. So it's like, oh, it's a joke, but it's a cult, but it's a joke, but not really. And I just, th this is a little weird to me, you know, everyone wearing white and he of course is just feeding his ego by being the absolute fucking center of attention here. And I'll be honest, when I first saw this like now-ish, I was like, this is what happened to 30 Seconds to Mars. And they have Mars Island, which they were advertising essentially like a fire festival. So it was this three night all-inclusive festival experience to relax and restore with yoga amongst the trees, take a dip in the pool, catch a midnight screening or gaze at the stars and catch two intimate performances with 30 Seconds to Mars. So it's this weird cult by band association. The starter pack, by the way, to do this, look at this shit, is $1,000 does not include travel and $6,499 was the highest tier. So here's whatever, the truth. I don't know what it is, by the way. Every time someone wants to run a cult, why do they suddenly have to turn into white savior Jesus? Like, is it just me? Or have you guys caught on to this too? Because I've noticed this and it's a little weird. It started in 2013, ironically, and, and now it's not ironic or whatever. And oh yeah, it's all for publicity. Probably, I don't know. I think this is an ego like feeding moment for him. Like, I think this man is just on a bizarre fucking ego trip. It, again, let's relate this back. Control of young underage women, allegedly, of course. You know, the cult, the the method acting, another form of bizarre fucking control. Like, it's, it's all a control thing. This is an ego issue at play. This is someone who thinks very highly of themselves or wants other people to think very highly of themselves. And this is about control and who's easy to manipulate. And I guess that that actually, unfortunately wraps, wraps up the story. It's a sad little fucking end. Is it a cash grab? Is it an ego boost? I don't know. Is he a cult leader? I don't know. I don't know if he's a cult leader. Do I think he's an absolute fucking gross weirdo? Yes, absolutely yes.